you Jesus for your amazing love there was one word in that or one phrase in that song that I really like so much it says your spirit lives within me wow that's so comforting mm. God's spirit lives on the inside of us yeah we're not alone that's what we've been talking about all this mm. time the spirit of God living on the inside of you mm. that really causes you to know that you are a son that's right. yeah and you know I think really you know, a person can really sing that song from the heart is when he knows that he's a son. Because mm. you can't really say that I'm forgiven because you were forsaken and not receive that love. Yeah. Really saying that song is really talking about the sacrifice of Jesus and what he has done for us. Mm. You know, we are forgiven. Why are we forgiven? Because he had to be forsaken. Yeah. And we are accepted because he was condemned. That's exactly what happened on the cross. I mean, nobody accepted him when he was on the cross. No. He was condemned on the cross. But the reason he did that was so that we could be accepted. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, thank God. I mean, I'm so, so Amen. thankful to God. I mean, wow. even though, you know, I know that for so long, I'm just so thankful because every day becomes so real to me, mm. knowing that no, that's God's love the key, is there. A gratitude, a heart of gratitude, a mm. thankful heart. When you're thankful, I mean, just keep saying, I'm thankful. When you wake up in the morning, just say, I'm thankful that I'm alive. Yeah. 
I'm alive, Jesus, you died and you rose again to give me your life. Mm. We should be thankful. I know. Amazing love is what he came to give us. It's an amazing love. It was not just a love. It was a love that he demonstrated. Mm. You know, it's easy for a lot of people to say, I love you. And, you, you know, when you hear that, you may think, wow, they love me. But are they demonstrating that love? That's right. Are they showing you that they love you? Mm. And, you know, love is not just in word. Mm. It's very easy to be said in word. Yeah. But for some, it's hard to do in action. And, you know, for God, it was hard. I mean, it was... It was, I'm sure it was, you know, hard on him because he had to send his only son he to go to through that. He had to forsake his son. Yeah. Crucify. I know. And, but you see, God looked at it in the sense of receiving us. Mm. And he, he saw the end. His son. Yeah. He you sowed know. his son into the world like a seed mm. and said, I'm going to receive I know. sons. Back. I know. That's right. And, you know, we don't really know what was going through God's mind at that time. But really, when you go to think, I mean, God... He has, you know, feelings for us. He has emotions. And, but he decided, okay, I know my son is going to go through something really painful and really hard. Mm. But in the end, I know that I'm going to receive more sons into my kingdom. Mm. I mean, that's just temporary. Yeah. He's going to be on the cross for a moment. But he's going to shed the most important price ever, the highest mm. price. That's how much God loves you. Mm. Those of you out there who don't feel loved, maybe you lost someone. A loved one died or maybe you've just had a broken relationship for so long maybe your family is all separated your mom doesn't care for you your father is separated from you I want to tell you something Jesus loves you so much he died for you mm. and he loves you so much that he has made you part of his family or if you haven't received him he wants to make you part of his family mm. and you right. can receive it and his family is really big Mm. You know, you got a big family lots when you come to love. God. That's yeah. lots of love. That's the lots thing. That's really love. true. You know, the family is, it's not just a family. Yeah. It's a family full of love. Mm. And that's why we can really you say know, amazing the thing love. Is, yeah, amazing love. The thing is, people, sometimes we think Christmas time, I can't wait for that time. Mm. Family time. Yeah. But you know what? When you're with Jesus, you don't just have to wait for Christmas to be together. Mm. You're with Him all day long. And if you're believing all year long and if you're believing for a loved one to come back you've been separated for a while or you're believing for him to get saved or her to get saved just be thankful that you have Jesus and speak my loved one is coming back mm. my father or my son or my mother or my sister or whoever is coming back yeah pray for them believe that's the spirit of a son yeah that you have agreement with God I mean even God doesn't want anyone to perish and die so he put his spirit in you so that you can have the same love that That's God right. has. Yeah, it is an amazing love when you go to think of it. You know, when you receive Jesus, you receive power, like we talked mm -hmm. about. And we should just, you know, go back to what we just said in the, you know, previous program is that you have received power. You have received You know, power. as much as you've received love, I mean, you've received power as well. You know, God gives us that power so that we can know we are not um, helpless anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be a son and you know not know what to do mm -hmm. you know you could be in the family of god and well you may just think oh, well i'm there i'm born again now what's next well the next is to know that you have the power you've received jesus and then the next step is receive the holy spirit and then you receive the power and with that you can change lives mm -hmm. you can bring healing your healing yeah, is a change overcoming power it's all Jesus said power. you have overcoming power in you over mm. all the power of the enemy. In Revelations 12, 11, it says we have overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Mm. And the word of our testimony is just declaring who you are in Christ, declaring who God is to you. When you just declare, you're just stomping on the devil and saying, I know who I am. Mm. I'm a son of God. That's right. That's overcoming power. That's right. You don't have to be defeated around by the devil and let him just sit on your shoulder and put sickness on you, put fear on you, put pressure on you, mm. put condemnation on you. But you say, I'm on top of the world. That's right. God has prepared a table for you in the presence of your enemies. Amen. So when the enemies of fear come against you, realize that you are at the table. You've mm. got authority because a son does have authority. You know, the Bible says that he's the greater one living on the inside of us. He's greater than he who is in the world. Amen. And you know what? It's only a son who can really say that out of his mouth. 
mm. that he is the greater one living because he belongs to the family of his father. And God is your father. Mm. You know, God is a good father. You know, he's, yes. not gonna, he's not gonna stomp on you. Sure, he will correct you. Yeah. And he corrects you so that you can really come to the place of understanding the truth. Yeah. You know, because right. a lot of times, a lot of times it's easy to say, well, I just don't want to receive correction. You know, I'd rather do it my way. Mm. Well, the thing you about know, being yeah. a son is that you don't live a loose life. Mm. You, even in natural um, sense, when you talk about a father and a son, a good father and a good son, I mean a good father who loves his son, he will correct him. Mm. And I mean, it's so protective when you have God's correction that you won't fail. You know for sure, I'm going in the wrong way and God says, step aside. Mm. Wait, I don't want you to get into that destruction. That's pit. right. And he so says that because he loves us. I know. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. why he, he, you know, amazing love. It doesn't mean that everything is just, wow, it's just going great. No, sometimes God will have to correct you. Mm -hmm. And he will correct you so that you can really come to the understanding of his truth. Mm -hmm. Because he sees greater than you can see. Yeah. And you can just, you, you know, you may just see that moment. That's all you're seeing. But God sees greater than that. Mm -hmm. And he knows if you make that move, it's wrong. You're going to, you know, fall into a ditch. But because of his love, he'll correct you and you'll be glad he did. Yeah. You know, you'll be glad he did. Mm -hmm. So we've been really talking about um, being a partaker of God and knowing that you are a son. And the reason we repeat that a lot, and it's good to repeat God's word because you remember things when it's repeated. Yeah. You remember the word when it's repeated. Mm -hmm. You know, it's easy to read the Bible and, you know, one chapter and then not read it again. I mean, you're not going to remember anything. Mm -hmm. You may remember here and there but you're not really going to understand it with your heart because reading the Bible is not just reading it just out of your mind. You've got to read it with the Spirit of God on the inside of you. And it's like not we like said, reading a series of books, volume one, I finished that, mm. and volume two. But you have the yeah. Bible, where you may have read a scripture before, but you read it again, the more revelation you get then, mm. the more God speaks to you, the more insight you get out of that. And you may, there are certain scriptures I have read and I've read them so many times, but again, when I read them, it's like, Lord, I never saw that before. Mm. So that's the way you should have the, when you, when you read the Bible, that should be your perspective. And this is the only book where you're going to get information about being a son, mm. being a son of God. You really can't get it anywhere else because all the scriptures that God has put in this word is so that you can understand and grow in Him. God wants you to grow in Him. As grow. a son, you, you have received that position, but then you've got to grow in it. You've got to understand mm. it. You've got to fill your whole being with who you are as a son of God. Mm. And we've been talking about being a partaker. See, when you are a son, you have come to the table of blessing. Yeah. You've come to the table of receiving everything that God has prepared for you. So we saw, you know, in the previous program that you are a partaker of a heavenly calling. It's not man that called you, it's God. Mm -hmm. And when God calls us, He calls us for the highest calling ever. That's it's right. the highest calling. Mm -hmm. And then we saw that we are partakers of His divine nature. Everything that God has belongs to you, His characteristics. You know, like when you say, you know, she's got the nature of her mom or her dad. Why is that? because they've been so long with them. Yeah. They've been so long that they can sometimes talk like them, sometimes they can act like them. I know we can sometimes, because mm -hmm. we've been so long with our parents. And it's probably the same for you. But you know, when you're, it's, it's actually the same thing with God, when you really go to see. It's mm -hmm. the same thing with God. The more time you spend with Him, you inherit His characteristics. Mm -hmm. You know, right. people will maybe literally call you and you know, He's like Jesus. He acts mm -hmm. like Jesus. Yeah. Uh, and they might even call you Jesus sometimes <laughs> yeah. because you act so much like Jesus. Mm. And that's a good thing, you it's know, good, bad because thing. you are a son and that's the way you're supposed to act. Mm. You know, acting like God. In fact, there's a scripture like that. Mm. We're not just talking about, you know, something we heard or, you know, oh, it, wow, this is yeah. a good saying. But, you know, there is a scripture like that. So let's just, just check this out. Mm. First John 4 and verse 17. And notice... This is not talking about heaven, okay? First John 4, 17. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Mm. It's talking about Jesus. As Jesus is, so are we in this world. Mm. We're not going to be like him someday. 
we are like it's him. not as he was as he, was. As he is as he is because even everything that he did 2000 years ago it is still taking place mm -hmm. he always says i am I he's am. the god of the now mm -hmm. as much as he was then he is now mm -hmm. as he is now so are we in this world yeah that's the best life that you can really live is living as jesus is you know you could try to live like somebody else but it's not going to work because you weren't made like them Mm -hmm. But you need to know that when you come to Jesus, you are made like him. So it's not, there's nothing wrong in you acting like Jesus. Now the world may think it's wrong and it's crazy. You know, they will think that because it's very different. Mm -hmm. Because it's nothing like the way they act and not, nothing like the trend. And you know, it doesn't mean that you're weird. You know, it's possible to be weird sometimes. But God Jesus doesn't make was. you weird. Yeah, but God doesn't make you weird in the place where you're like living on some other cloud or some other planet. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. You know, living according to his word is to live the true life on earth. That's mm -hmm. the true life. I mean, it's blessed when you go to see it. I mean, getting results. I mean, living in divine health. Mm -hmm. So I don't care what they call me. Let mm -hmm. them call me Jesus freak or something. But mm -hmm. if I'm getting the results, I'm so blessed then. Mm. You know, if I'm getting healing and the world is all sick, then wow, there's a big difference between that. And there should be a difference. Yeah. You, can, you can invite the world to Jesus, mm. but then don't go and, you know, live a sloppy life like they are. I mean, who wants to be sick anyway? Yeah, who wants to? Yeah. <laughs> Not me, for sure. Mm. You know, I'd rather go with the promise that by the stripes of Jesus I'm healed. That's right. And live by that, because I know that I'm going to get better results when I live by that than mm. saying I'm sick all the time. Yeah. You know, you know, our words are really important. Living as a son, you know, we realize the importance of the words that we speak. Yeah. Because our words are seeds. We've said that before. It's, it's another seeds. point to living like a son. Mm, the our words. words. Yeah. yeah. Do you know Jesus, the reason they saw him act like the father was because of the words he spoke. Yeah. They said his words are full of authority and power. Mm -hmm. Now we said when you receive Jesus, you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive the power. And your words begin to change. Your words are full of authority, very different kind of words. Mm -hmm. It's not like the norm, it's different. But the best part about it being different is that it's life-giving. Yeah. You know, Jesus said it's the spirit that gives life. The flesh doesn't profit anything. Mm -hmm. You know, talking and acting like the way others talk, it won't profit you anything. Rather, it'll profit you misery, mm -hmm. being miserable all the time. But living like a son in Jesus, you'll realize the importance of speaking powerful words. Speaking the words of God, that's what he wants to do. And that's why when he says here, as he is, so are we in this world, we also realize the importance of our words. Okay, Jesus, you may think, okay, would he approve of me constantly saying I'm sick, I'm broke, you know, I'm good for nothing. Would he approve of that? Is he doing that? Is he saying Yeah, that? is he doing that? That's exactly the question. Is he doing that? No. Part of being a son of God is to be in tune with the Spirit of God. Mm. You know, we have the Spirit of God on the inside us and we need to be led by mm. that Spirit. Yeah, and that Spirit won't ever lead you to do anything that's wrong. Mm. The Spirit will always lead you into the truth. Mm. You know, the world may say, well, this is the truth. This is great. This, this is, is wonderful. what we've been doing. Yeah. And, you know, we're not telling you to just, you know, get away and put yourself into a corner. Never. It's just that when you like, you're surrounded with them, you talk different. You know, maybe you don't say at all, you know, maybe they may make certain jokes that you won't agree with. And then you will say, well, maybe sometimes you have to just keep your mouth closed, mm -hmm. you know, but agreeing and laughing around with them. Or even walk away sometimes. Sometimes you gotta walk away. Mm -hmm. Bible says, don't stand in the way of sinners. In other words, it doesn't mean not to stand around them. Yeah. You will have to stand around them. But it just means don't agree with the things that they do. Mm -hmm because you know it's not gonna profit anything. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not gonna profit. So, you know, we're not saying this and don't do this and don't do that. The reason we're saying this is because it's not gonna profit you. It's not gonna bring life to you. Mm -hmm. And it may lead you in the wrong direction also. But when you realize that you're a son, in the world you can be a son, you can talk different. Because Jesus was among so many heathens. Yeah. He's among so many people. But he spoke different. And you know, you don't have to ever condemn yourself, even if you've messed up. You yeah. know, a son never has to be in the place where he's condemned. Mm. You don't have to be condemned. There is a good scripture about not being condemned. Mm. Maybe we should just share this because yeah. we, we don't know there are that. so many people out there who are watching who have various views. So mm. maybe if you're feeling condemned, just listen to this. Mm. If you have a paper or a pen and write down this or read it later in your Bible. Romans 12. 
Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, now this is talking to children of God. Whenever the word brethren is used, it's talking to the family of God. So I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And verse 2 says, Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Mm. That's and right. that word conform to the world means don't mix around, uh, get their opinions or get their kind of the ways they do things. Now you may have to associate with worldly people, maybe in your job, in your school, or even in your neighborhood, but conforming yourself means getting closely mm. their ideas, getting their ways of doing things, their words, okay? So you may say, how is it possible, you know? Sometimes I tend to, like, the slip of the tongue, it may, you know, like I've heard people say this, so it mm. just came out, yeah. you know, but... Don't condemn yourself. Yeah. Just because you messed up, you can always start over again. Mm. But the key is that when you're walking with the Lord as a son, you don't constantly have to make that decision mm. of walking like them. Yeah, the scripture for condemnation is in Romans 8. I read mm. to you the scripture about um, not conforming yourself to the world. In fact, that but was a great wonderful scripture. because being yeah. because when you when you come to Jesus and you you transform yourself, mm. you become a totally changed person. Mm. It's 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 a life that you've never lived before. Being a new creature in Christ is a new life. Yeah, it's it's a brand new life. It's a life that you've never live before but it's the most wonderful life that you'd ever want to live so yeah. romans 8 let me just quickly read that too there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in christ jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death this is romans 8 verse 1 and 2. Hmm. now not being condemned because you are in christ and you walk after the spirit means now, it doesn't mean that you just keep doing things the way you want and just uh, grieve the Holy Spirit when He says not to do it. That doesn't mean that. But He's talking about when you're associating with, when you've made a mistake especially. You know, if you've done the wrong thing and you feel guilty about yourself, run to the Lord and He'll forgive you. Mm. But you know, if, if it's something the Lord has told you don't do, don't hang around with these people, don't do it. Don't do it, don't grieve the Holy Spirit because you will receive forgiveness, but then why would you want to grieve the Spirit of God? Mm. The Bible clearly says that it doesn't profit anything, mm. walking after the flesh. Yeah. And But when you walk in the Spirit, you have life. Mm. So you're not making a mistake when you walk after the ways of God. Mm. You are actually making the best choice in your life. You are. And you know what? Others are going to see that and want to come to it. They will mm. be drawn to it. When we lift up Jesus in our lifestyle, they will be drawn to it. And you know, like we spoke about, you know, you don't have to struggle being a witness for Jesus when you know that you have the power on the inside of you. Mm. You won't have to struggle. You know, the apostles in the Bible didn't struggle being a witness for Jesus. You know, they hung around him so much. And even after he was ascended on high, he was now living in, the, in, in their hearts. You know, they didn't struggle living his lifestyle yeah. because they had a fellowship with him. So when you are in fellowship with the Father, then you realize you start living the way He wants you to live. And then when you're out there, that life will just begin to flow from you because you have gone and done your homework, I should say, behind the scenes. Yeah. You know, you've given yourself behind closed doors when nobody's watching, you're just with the Father. And He's putting thoughts in you. Mm. You know, right. he, he puts thoughts when you, in when you. When you fellowship with the Lord so much so, your spirit becomes strong mm. and then you're able to yield to the Spirit of God. Mm. Then you become more sensitive to the Holy Spirit when He says do this and when He says don't do it. Mm. So that communion and that fellowship with the Lord is so important. Mm. Yeah, and so you may be asking, how do I get close to God? How do I do it? The Bible says when you draw near to Him, He draws near to you. Mm. And you take His word. Now look at this as a bag of seeds and, and a book full of promises. Now remember, you've got the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. He will teach you the Word. He will show you. You know, the worst thing you could say is, I can't study this Bible. It's too hard. No, you can. And you do have the time because when you give time to God, you always see Him add back to you more time. And in fact, 
when you are in, in you're doing your work or school work or something else, yeah. you know, you'll find how easy it is. It doesn't have to be a toil, stress, mm. because you are in fellowship with the Father and He's putting thoughts in you. He's putting ideas, yeah. new and ideas. Those, those words that you said, I can't read the Bible, I don't understand. You know, we have to get rid of those words, you know. Sometimes those can be the snare that blocks our mm. relationship with the Lord and blocks our effective Christian walk. Mm. Words like, I, I don't hear God's voice, I can't read the Bible, you know, I don't understand what God mm. is saying. You know, when you get close to God, you will get close to His Word, you spend time with His Word, and those phrases, those words will change. Mm. You will start saying, I can hear the Holy Spirit. That's, that's a statement of faith. That'll be your most enjoyable yeah. time. It may be like difficult right now, but when you say it, I can hear God's voice, you will hear Him. That's right. Those are statements, those are confessions of faith, which will become a reality eventually once you keep saying them. Mm. I can hear God's voice. I can understand the Bible. I am a good, strong Christian. Start, and, start speaking yeah. positive words. And the more you desire after it, you begin to see the benefits following. The Bible mm. says um, in Psalms, goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. Yeah. So the more you follow after the word, you begin to see good things following you, mercy following you. Amen. Maybe right now everything bad's following you. You yeah. know, all you can think of is bad. Misery is following you. Probably uh, sickness is following you. Probably pain is following you all the time. But let me tell you one thing. Let's change that. Let's decide, okay, now I'm just gonna get into the Word. I'm gonna fellowship with God. And make Jesus number one. You know, you won't ever be sorry that you did. You'll be glad you did when you make Him number one. Because you'll see good things start to follow you. Your life will go in a new direction. It will be changed. And the best part is you'll be living as God wants you to live, as a son, as we've been talking about. And that's what we're talking about, being a partaker of his inheritance. Let's just and go that's to this the third uh, one. other scripture yeah. in Colossians 1. There's one that's more That's exactly what we were going to go yeah. with. Yeah. And the time. Yeah. But anyways, it's good to study the Word. It's mm. good to refer scriptures. Yeah. In fact, you can just study the Word all day. And sometimes when I study the Word, I just can't get out sometimes. Mm. That's what God does. He just keeps you attracted to it. Mm. So, That's a good yeah, thing. we should just close with this verse right now and finish off with the three partakers. Mm. You know, yeah, maybe you could just read that verse there in Colossians 1. Colossians 1 verse 12, it says, giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet or able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Mm. We got an inheritance. Amen. That's wonderful. You know, we feast on His goodness. In Jesus, you have an inheritance. You know, a good father would lay up an inheritance for his children. Yeah. And God has done that. Mm -hmm. Before the foundation of the world, He has laid up some great things for you. And you can tap into those right now. Amen. Not just when you go to heaven and leave yeah. this earth. You can tap into it right now. And God wants you to. Mm -hmm. Because He has given you these promises. Like we saw earlier, you partake of His divine nature. Amen. His inheritance. He has, he has, you know, He went to the cross so that we could have these things. Mm -hmm. He rose again so we have it. Healing, inheritance of salvation, mm. inheritance of forgiveness, of prosperity, all that you can think of that is good. That's right. Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father. So you are partaking of His heavenly calling as a mm. son, you partake of His divine nature, and you partake of His, inherit His inheritance. As a son, you have wonderful benefits. Amen. And we believe that this has blessed you, knowing that you are a son, and there's so mm. much more we could talk about. But we want you to know today that God has made you a son, Amen. not a slave, not a sinner. Mm -hmm. When you come to the family of God, you have been made a son. Yeah. And praise God, we hope you've been blessed by this. And maybe you could go over the verses again that we've been talking about yeah. and do your own yourself. Bible study as mm. well. You know, find out scriptures on the son, what, it's, what, uh, what it means to be a son of God and what it means to be a child of God. Mm. Do those studies and you will be blessed. That's right. And you'll find it's the best life on earth. Mm. So we, we hope you've enjoyed this program and we'll see you next time.